Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Diablo 3. And update time. Uh, well, update for, you know, the next little bit of the video. If you hear noises in the background, disregard them. They are children running around, running roughshod on my house. Um, if it's not children, I have no idea what it is. I hope it's children. And I hope they're, you know, dropping balls on the roof or the ceiling or the floor above me as opposed to their heads which they're also known to do that um, and the actual update I wanted to talk about was the auction house a couple episodes ago I uh, decided to show you guys a little bit of the auction house and we came to the conclusion that these boots based on current market prices and this I think was two or three days ago now when I recorded that one anyway um, you know we found out that these were worth about 300,000 Tip about the auction house. Never trust anything, and the prices are always going to change. So, let's see. Having three different stats on there, we'll leave strength on, and we search. And I forgot to input my information here. Let's, let's do that. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty much the exact same thing that I have. It's slightly better this version and it's being listed for nearly five million the last time I priced this one out it was worth about three hundred thousand now this is probably a vast overestimation about what it's worth someone probably has no idea what they're doing or they happen to see something like I did and oh I can probably sell it for that much let's put it on for that much it doesn't always work the prices are constantly changing so anything that you see me trying to sell for a certain amount of money or even the amount of money I have it's a reasonably high amount for a certain point in time maybe once the new expansion comes out there will be something completely different you know maybe this will be peanuts in the new you know economy that they're going to introduce I don't know but, you know, that's the other thing, you know, you don't always want to just get rid of something right away because it doesn't seem like there's an option to sell it. Because sometimes it'll pop up later. Sometimes there are very few options. If there's only one option like this, I would not put a lot of faith in there. But, you know, if you, you know, say cut these down to 25, 25, 25. Okay, that does not help my case at all. Okay, let's cut it down to 15. I said 15, thank you. Yeah, and we get some more reasonable values here. You know, that that's the thing with this game, is every time you're going to check the auction out, you're, you're going to see different results. And unless you're checking it every three seconds at least. But yeah, so never think that one item is exactly the price just because you saw something very close to it specifically when it comes to legendaries and set items because you can buy a wind force for peanuts and then you know sell one that's worse for i don't think i have one sitting around do i oh, i do look at that i have a wind force that is a wind force if you were wondering there are so many of these flooding the auction house at this point that you know this one is high mid-range to mid-range I guess I I don't know a lot uh, my demon hunter is not particularly good I don't really care for the demon hunter character all that much I haven't played around with them all that much you know I've I've made two got them both to level 60 to get the achievement and deleted one and this one's just kind of sat idle for you know five months but you know aside from that you know the price of these is always fluctuating and you can get something that is way better than this you know one of the best ones for maybe 10 million and then sell one that's worse than the one that you just bought for 10 million for 50. that's the one of the reasons i think why they're trying to get rid of the auction house because it it doesn't really work however it is a good way of making money if you know how to play it properly and that is probably the easiest way to make money you know uh few months well about a month month and a half ago I created a hardcore character actually I have one more hardcore character let's hurry up and load please thank you 
Uh, not achievements, that's the wrong one. Yeah, see I made one hardcore character that died in under three hours and that was kind of annoying. I I call bullshit on how I died, but you know, that's the same for anyone who dies on hardcore. But, you know, I started with absolutely nothing. Nobody helped me when it came to gear or money or anything like that. And in, you know, all of a few weeks, I managed to build myself up a reasonable amount of money. You know, it doesn't take very long. I think by the time I was finished with normal, I had over 2 million gold. It doesn't really take that long if you're selling things in the appropriate manner. And I, as you can see from my list here, I've been trying to sell the same three things for bloody forever and no one's buying them. So the hell with that. But yeah, so this is my hardcore character, which is not particularly useful or talented or good in any way. But that's what it is. And it just is trying to demonstrate that you can earn a reasonable amount of money in a reasonably short time if you know how to work the auction house. And that's, you know, I suggest doing that up until, you know, March 18th when they decide to kill it. Or when they've planned to kill it anyway. Too much babbling, not enough playing. Let's get back to the game. Now, last time we took down Asmodan. I welcome the chance to travel with you. And, An yeah, we already where talked to you. Adria, Leah, and yes, we already talked to you. We know we're supposed to head down to the Asmodan armory. Is dead. How in hell did we live to see this? I wonder, you don't seem to do much of anything. Bloody leaping hell. I just heard she defeated the demon army's general. That means we're going home. We can go home. Where is your home, anyway? Did you hear? The battle is over. The demons are fleeing. We can go home. Oh, bless her. Bless her for what she's done for us. You can actually talk to this You're boy. Back. Oh, I thought... I will not fall so easily. It is good to see you, child. Now, I didn't talk to him a bunch during the game, but I believe this child loses both of his parents in this struggle. There she goes. Hooray! Our savior! Thank you so much, my lady. Sure, why not? Anyway, there's well, one more dialogue, I guess. That demon lord is dead. Time to move on. I'll go pack my knitting. Here's something that's kind of interesting. Hollis, you surprised me. You didn't run. I told you I wouldn't. I'm not brave like you, but I am no liar. This was the mayor from New Tristram in Act 1. And he's been here the whole time. I just forgot to go over the fact that he's here. Um, you know for some reason he managed to go all the way down this way, probably because he was shunned out of the village for being a useless mayor. Now up here we have an empty hole, but it looks like someone could do something here. Does that suggest to anyone that they had every intention on throwing another artisan, that being the, what is it, the mystic that they're putting in? Yeah. I think they had plans on doing it right from the get-go. There's a similar spot in Act 2. Act th Act 1, I don't remember where exactly they'd put it, but their Act 1's huge. They'll have plenty of room to put it in there. But yeah, it just, it seems kind of weird that, you know, they had, it all kind of seemed like it, it was planned out ahead of time. Anyway, we enter the armory, and there's no one here, and there's blood. That's unsettling. Anyone think the game's over yet? <laughs> uh, well, time's up. The game's not over. Adria, when did you decide to betray us? Twenty years ago, a great and terrible power drew me to Tristram. But Aiden, Leoric's eldest son, defeated that power and sought to contain it within his own flesh. The Dark Wanderer. It was Diablo I saw within him, and I pledged myself to his service. Now, at last, his grand design comes to fruition. Dear Leah, 
Deckard always suspected your true father was Diablo himself. And now, my daughter, you shall serve as his vessel. Now, H.C. Bailey and uh, Deceased Crab have Star Tropic Syndrome. I live. I want but to introduce Star Wars Syndrome. The seven evils are now one within me. I am the prime evil. Well done, faithful Adria. Go now, until I call upon you again. Now, at last, to my true goal, the one that has always eluded me. The utter destruction of the High Heavens. Now, I've kept to myself for the most part about how the plot was going to end up, because I didn't want to spoil anything. But if you take a second and you look at it, a lot of the things that Adria's done throughout the course of, you know, since we've known her, have been a little suspect. You know, she pushes Leah too far when we're trying to open the gates to Chaldeum and take down Belial. Controlling the Soul Stone is so difficult for Leah. I really must do something. No. Remember when your sisters were training? You couldn't intervene then either. Well, I may have bolstered their spells. Just a little. Okay, that had nothing to do with what I was talking about. Oh well, um, yeah, so... But it is kind of... It's not super obvious, but it's definitely... Identi you know, it makes sense that she would do this. There are a lot of hints dropped that Adria is going to be evil and... Uh, the Star Wars Syndrome. The Darth Vader, I am your father trope that has been done to death. We had it in Final Fantasy IV. We had a variant of it in Final Fantasy IX. We have it here. We'll have it in more games that I plan on playing. One I just started, in fact. Make a start to... Yeah, this game is not over and not by a long shot. We have one more act. I don't know if they're going to introduce another act when we get to uh, Reaper of Souls. Hmm, that'd be interesting. I would assume so. They have done that in the previous game in Diablo 2. Introduced a whole new act. Now enjoy more. Even in the heart of heaven. Awesome cinematics. Angels can still feel fear.
you know you have power beyond comprehension when you breathe on the gates of heaven and they fall. Now that was an awesome cinematic. Not as human as some of the other ones were, where we got to see, you know, Leah's Adria face. has betrayed us completely. Undistorted. And Leah's soul is lost. Through her, Diablo has been reborn as the prime evil. All the powers of hell are his to command. The high heavens tremble, and the angels are helpless before Diablo's assault. Only I remain to set things right, and rid the world of Diablo's evil forever. In Diablo 2, we had three acts in Sanctuary, followed by the fourth act, which took place in Hell. Only makes sense that come Probably Diablo 3. The border you can be. Shut up. Heavens, what have we done? Yep, Diablo 3. We get three acts in Sanctuary, and the fourth act takes place in Heaven. Imperious, you cannot mean to face Diablo again. Your wounds are barely healed. The heavens burn. This is your fault, Tyrion. And you, Nephilim. Look below and see what your kind has wrought! The aspect of valor condemns us. This will be difficult. The Diamond Gates have stood since the light first broke over the high heavens. Now they lie in ruins. Imperius is right. I am the cause of this. Diablo did this, not you. You did everything in your power to prevent this devastation. Long ago, my brethren and I voted to decide the fate of man. I cast the final vote that spared you from extinction. Now humanity has birthed the prime evil. Tyriel, you believed in us. You became one of us. Now you must live as a mortal and surrender your fears to hope. Stay here and wallow in your misery if you like. But I'm going on. But you don't understand. Hope has been silenced. Dire tidings, indeed. So, yeah. Now we can move on to the vestibule of... I don't know how to pronounce that. We're going to a waypoint that leads to a cinematic, which destruction I have wrought, leads to a boss fight. The last thing you see is got to destroy the Nephilim. <sighs> I do not fear you, Nephilim. You find only death in this eternal realm. Now, I want to talk about that cinematic because it's quite interesting. Now, it's going to spawn a bunch of these, so you want something that can take away a lot of them, and if you need to, leech, because they do a lot of damage. This guy is not really a challenge. He doesn't do a lot of damage. It's the little guys. I draw closer to my ultimate victory. It's a porcupine. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the cinematic. The cinematic is awesome. And it when I was listening to Diablo's voice, it just doesn't have the same oomph that he did in Diablo 2. Ah, ethereal. I am ethereal. Archangel of Fate, it is my duty to record what is and what will be within the scroll of Fate. But you, Nephilim, you are not in the scroll. Your fate is unwritten. Then I shall write my destiny in Diablo's blood. You can watch all of creation burn, or you can help me now. Perhaps fate can be changed. Quickly then. Ariel, Archangel of Hope, has been captured by Ragnoth, the Lord of Despair. I will free her, and then Hope will be restored to the heavens. Yeah, so I... Like, his voice just doesn't have the same oomph, and because these it doesn't the have the same oomph... Hope. The Archangel Ariel cannot be far. These guys will crash on you, and they have a moment of invulnerability. There's some angels here that also want to fight. 
Let's take out some of these guys. These little demon dudes are basically going to replace the other little demon dudes that we saw in Act 3. There'll be a lot of them, and they're good for experience. Um, bile crawlers are called here. I am so good. I astound myself. There will always be a well of blessing here, which I think gives you a random thingamajigger, random uh, shrine value. In this case, uh, protection shrine. That's eh, not bad. There are better ones. There's usually a champion pack around this area right here. Sometimes you won't find it, and those guys that just fell on me, these ones, they will fall on you and become a champion pack. Every time you come here, the first thing you want to do is head to the left. Just the way I'm going here. Now, Diablo had a much better voice in Diablo 2, which made him far more menacing. Which leads me to want to talk about um, an idea that I read about a little while ago. Yeah, here they are, finally. Oopsies. And what I read was someone was criticizing this now. game for making Your their villains awake. not very menacing and not very memorable and not, you know, evil enough. You know, they should be evil beyond reproach. But they're not. They're really kind of gimmicky These boss fights. Will wither if the corruption continues to spread, and all will be lost to darkness and ruin. Yeah, they got some crystal trees and stuff in the background. The artwork for this game is a lot of fun, and it is really cool. It's just, you know, when it comes to the strategy, or when it comes to the story, is I think where it falls apart. There are other aspects where it comes apart. But yeah, the um, you know they're they really could have done a lot more with, say, Belial's betrayal because it's pretty obvious Belial is the emperor. And this story had posed an alternate idea for it, which you was think interesting. You yourself free from the chains of fate, Nephilim, but all will kneel before Lord Diablo. And during the Sin War, when the three primevils, Diablo, Bale, and Mephisto, were sent to... This guy's not very challenging at all. He has that attack. And come on, do another attack. That attack again. If you stand close enough to him, he'll stab you. And something that looks like air tom break. Oh, and he summons guys. He never lasts that long when I fight him. Even the very first time I fought him, he didn't last long enough to summon guys. Yeah, so I guess that's what he does. He's not very challenging. There we go, one more attack. Again, not much of a challenge. Are you going to do anything? No, you're just going to die. Okay, yeah, but uh, this article I was reading, uh, it suggested that... Oh, stop talking whenever I'm trying to say something. Heaven will be destroyed long before you set one foot into the Silver Spire. Alright, let's do story and then I'll talk after that. Here's Ethereal. You've got other things to say. Thank you, Nephilim. I hoped the scroll of fate was wrong. That harmony would once again fill this troubled realm. I see now. That all hope lies in you. You can no longer be bound by the chains of fate. With my blessing, you can now dispel Diablo's corruption. It hides the rifts which bring his cursed servants to this hallowed place. The rifts must be closed. We will not okay. avail you. Okay. And more story. Diablo sought to bring despair down upon heaven, but I have destroyed his champion and restored hope. I thought this would bring Tyriel back to his senses, but he remains lost. Nevertheless, I must push on and eradicate Diablo's hellish portals. Okay, now, are you gonna let me talk, game? I'm trying to say something vaguely important, or at least vaguely interesting, I hope. And now, before we were cut off, we could not go through these 
corrupts gross now they're targetable and every time you kill here? one it will spawn a bunch of the bile crawlers usually i think about five northeast of here and yeah so one of these in this area and when you you just get warped back here where we began before or yeah whatever close enough we were came from there but we get warped back here one of these will contain a portal i found it now they seed with the corruption of hell. But yeah, the article I was reading proposed that Belial still be the uh, the emperor, but do something a little more interesting. And now this is probably too dark for something of Diablo to work on. The Th these ones talk about the uh, the angels of the high heavens, which aren't particularly Demons interesting from realm of to the, the plot hell. as much as the the, 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 or the uh, prime evils were in the other ones in Chaldeum, so I'm not going to listen to them. But, um... You sisters would end me. Yeah, 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 you talk too much. But they suggested that maybe Belial wasn't the one you killed. You go when you have a boss fight. This guy does a lot of damage. You will power up. Let's see, watch watch him, he powers up, dodge, and I did not dodge there. But if you get hit by that, it does a lot of damage, so specifically if you are not a barbarian or a monk, avoid that at all costs. And then destroy the rift. Well done, Nephilim. Diablo's vile minions can no longer use this rift to find their way into the Silver City. Now only one rift remains. Hmm, that was quick. And this just warps us right now. Only a rift. The flow of my legions will not stop. Diablo is not very good as a villain in this game. He really isn't. He's kind of boring, actually. He doesn't do all that much. He doesn't even show up until the final... Not even the final quarter, the final sixth of the game. This is a very short act, by the way. But yeah, th what I was trying to say about the um, about Belial before is he would actually like he's supposed to be the Lord of Lies, and during the um, uh, what was it, the Sin War, where the three prime evils were banished to the mortal realm, that being Sanctuary, um, Belial and Asmodon fought a civil war in Hell. Um, for control over hell and so they never as far as i know i never played diablo 1 so i don't know if they ever resolved it but they don't resolve it in diablo 2 and they don't resolve it here it would have made more sense and this article um definitely argues this point quite well in fact that the lord of lies should actually be a useful lord of lies and he should have say shown you you know Oh, I'm supposed to be this kid, so you know I'll transform into my demon form. You kill me, and then it's all revealed to be uh, a fake. You know, it was an astral projection. You actually killed this child emperor, and you slaughtered the city guards. And that would have actually made for a useful villain and an interesting one. Now I'm going around to show you where all of these. Uh, Corrupt, gross, are. but uh, you don't have to do this. If only they could see me you, now. Basically, it will be one of those. This area always looks the same. There's it is quite a one there, the one there, one there. When they can simply uh, fly everywhere. One here, one here. I think there's one there, one there, one there, one there, and this is where we have to go once we're done. But yeah, I, I thought that was a really interesting idea to do that with Belial and then have him show up again in Act 3 and attack um, Asmodan during the boss fight that you have with Asmodan. I'm just going to see if this one is actually... I draw closer to okay, I don't have time to do it <laughs> today. Oh, jeez. That, that just figures. I'm, I'm out of time and... Hellrift is right there, and once I quit the game and reload it up again and take this waypoint, this area will respawn completely different, and I won't get that right away, which is kind of annoying. Anyway, that's, that's enough for this episode, so yeah. I think that was a good idea to put into the game, however, it doesn't look like uh, Diablo has any plans on being changed in this manner. 
but at least it was interesting to look at a a more memorable look at these villains you know with Asmodan he's supposed to be the you know this great uh, strategist that's what they build him up as and he basically tells us his plan from start to finish and he's not very menacing you know Diablo's failing is he just doesn't have that menacing feel that his voice brought from the previous game and I, I don't think he was cast very well from a voice acting perspective. Uh, most of the other characters are. It's just Diablo is one that really irked me. And, you know, the characters aren't memorable enough. That's one of the, the big failings of this pl the plot in this game. But anyway, uh, I, I babbled enough. That's all for this episode. And I'll see you guys next time.